Hello, everyone, and welcome to the MyGBC podcast. I hope that you are all doing well, and hopefully you start the semester on a good note. And I'm also hoping that you are enjoying the winter, but in case that you are not, or you know, you want to enjoy it even more, Today's episode is a winter survival guide for you. So we are dishing out five practical tips on how to make the most of Toronto's winter. From subway savvy reading to budget-friendly indoor adventures, we have different tips that you can definitely learn a lot from. So grab a hot beverage, snuggle up, and let's conquer the winter blues together. Okay, so I have five different tips here for you. Number one is like a little bit of a chill one. So let's start with that one, which is read a good book. Diving into a good book during Toronto's winter is like wrapping yourself in a literary blanket while Mother Nature does her snowy thing outside. It's definitely a very cozy scape that can make your winter experience way more enjoyable. And there are a few different ways that you can have fun while reading the book. So we have gathered some of those for you. The number one option that you have is to crack open a book during your daily commute. You can always opt for ebooks or pocket sized paperbacks for easy maneuvering if that works better for you. And you always have to make sure that you choose your bookmark wisely because you do not want the bookmark to bail on you. You want it definitely to be something sturdy. So just be careful with what you're choosing because, you know, when you're in a subway or you're in a bus, it sometimes takes an expected turn. There's bumps on the road. So you want to make sure that you're not losing the page that you were on. And a bonus for you is to use audiobooks for days when you need to keep an eye on your surroundings. And some people generally are more comfortable with audiobooks. I personally can focus more if I'm listening to someone read the book for me compared to like if I'm trying to read it myself, especially like if I'm walking, I can't hold the book. So that's much easier for me. Another solution for you would be to scope out cafes near you that you can go to. Look for spots with decent lighting and a cozy vibe. Choose beverages wisely. A hot drink that can last for a while without turning into icy sadness is key. You definitely do not want icy sadness. Also, you can always invest in a spill-proof travel mug for those unexpected bumps in the reading road. As I mentioned that if you are, you know, in the subway or you're in a train or whatever, It sometimes can be bumpy. And for those unexpected turns, a coffee mug is definitely very helpful and spill proof. Also, if you are trying to be more sustainable, that's something that you could do even when you go to a coffee shop. You can ask them to pour your drink and your just coffee mug that you already have. Another great location for reading books is very obviously a library. So when hitting the library, you have to have a game plan, preferably, so you can make a list of good books that you are interested in beforehand to avoid the overwhelming urge to check out literally everything. I know I tend to do that sometimes. So if you want to avoid that, prepare a list. But if you are someone that, you know, you have a little bit of time on your hand and that day specifically, feel free to just go in and see what options they have, because sometimes they have a lot of things that we have no idea that they have. And we just go and see it and we're like, oh, my God, this is an amazing book and I want to read it. So why not? You can always do that too. But my suggestion for you particularly would be the Toronto Reference Library. You do not even need a membership or a card to go in there, or you can just walk in. Now, the thing about the Reference Library is that you cannot borrow books and check them out of this library. You can do that with the other libraries, but you can always stay in there and enjoy their really, really beautiful space. It's really beautifully designed, and it has a lot of different spaces just like sit down and get some work done. Or if you want to read their books, you always have that option as well, obviously. They also have photo archives in the Toronto Reference Library and so many different great books about literally any topic that you can think of. So Toronto Reference Library is my suggestion personally. Tip number two would be to embrace an outdoor winter activity. So this one is definitely a more fun and entertaining one if that's what you're looking for. So instead of just like staring out your window, grumbling about the snow and the cold, why not make a practical day out of it and go out with your friends? You can grab a cheap sled from Home Depot or a no frills crazy carpet from the dollar store. No need for fancy gear. You can buy all of these for very cheap prices. And then you can head over to Christie Pitts Park for some budget friendly tobacconing. You can split the cost of the sled or chip in for a couple of carpets with your friends. 
and you've got yourself a day of snowy adrenaline pumping fun without breaking the bank, which I think is great. Now, if gliding on ice is more your speed, downtown's Nathan Phillips Square has got you covered. You can rent skates for about 15 bucks, or you can be thrifty and borrow a pair for free at select spots. Also, definitely make sure that you're checking out the City of Toronto website for drop-in skating details. They've got the lowdown on where to lace up and where you can do all of these things. It's a practical way to enjoy the winter vibes and be with your friends all while keeping your budget intact. Now, moving on to tip number three, we have exploring indoor activities. So if you are the type of person that you prefer to be, you know, in a warmer place and you prefer staying inside rather than going outside for winter activities, you can go ahead and do this option. So there are many different indoor activities and scenes in Toronto that we have that can be a game changer for these kind of people. So you can check out cafes, as I mentioned before, for a warm cup of coffee or tea. There are bars for a relaxed vibe, and there is also restaurants for a good meal if you're interested in that. Definitely dive into the world of entertainment at places like arcades, activate, you can play different games, it's like a sport technically, or you can indulge yourself in you know, a little bit of a competitive game like axe throwing, um, skate rooms, or a round of bowling, whatever that works for you. These are all very fun. And now, if you are up for a nostalgic twist, you can try mini golf or roller skating. And the options are actually as diverse as the city itself, ensuring that there is something for everyone. I definitely didn't mention all of them. There are so much more games and entertaining activities that you can do. So if you want a more comprehensive list than what I just described, you can find it in our show notes. So definitely check that. And you can always check out websites like BlogTO where they always collect a list of activities that you can do indoor or outdoor or whatever during winter, summer, or whatever season that you want. So that was tip number three. Now, tip number four is to host a game night. So when you want to, you know, have a fun and cheap night with your friends, you can go for the simple stuff. Forget about like fancy things and try classic board games or those cards tucked away in your closet that you've been keeping there for a long time. These old school games bring back good memories and don't really need any fancy setups or expensive additions. And you can always, you know, ask your friends to bring their games as well. These games are usually very not heavy, so you can just put it in your pocket or your backpack and bring it to your friends' places, which gives you much more options. And to make it even better, you can make your low-cost get-together a potluck. You can ask everyone to bring their favorite comfort food. This way, your table has a mix of tasty dishes and no one has to stress about doing all the cooking. It makes the whole vibe more chill and everyone can enjoy good food and good company without spending a lot. And it can always, you know, take turns. Sometimes you do it, sometimes your friends do it. So keep it simple, add some fun games and make it a potluck. You're not just having an affordable night with friends, but you are making a cozy space for shared moments and laughter, which is great. Now, last but not the least is embracing culture. So this one is a very short but sweet tip for you. You can embrace the culture and the warmth of our city. Toronto boasts a rich cultural scene that comes alive during the colder months. You can explore museums, there is art galleries and theaters that offer a warm respite from the chilly outdoors that we have definitely going on in Toronto. It's very chilly out there. So there are many different cultural institutions that have discounted or even free entry days, allowing you to enjoy the city's artistic offerings without breaking the band. For example, some of the different museums and galleries that we have in Toronto are Number one, the Royal Ontario Museum or ROM. We have the Art Gallery of Ontario or AGO if you're more interested to art and design, especially for our design students from our School of Design. This is a great place for you to check out. Or if you're generally interested in art, this is my favorite museum as well. There is so much to see over there. Then we have Science Centre if you're more into science. We have Aga Khan Museum. And then there is Textile Museum of Canada. Uh, there is Batashu Museum, Toronto Railway Museum. Hockey Hall of Fame, and Castle Loma, which is actually, as you know, Castle Loma Castle is very close to our Castle Loma campus. So if you go there, you can definitely check it out after classes even. So this is just a short list of the museums that we have in Toronto. There is a couple more. 
that you can find. So if you are into museums and checking them out, definitely make sure that you are just doing a quick search on the internet to see when you can find free or discounted tickets or if there are more options. Okay, all right, folks, that's a wrap for today's My GBC Podcast Winter Survival Guide. Thank you so much for tuning in and braving the chill with us. I hope that you are going to enjoy this uh, winter and remember to stay warm out there, whether you are conquering the cold with a good book, exploring Toronto's indoor games, or simply enjoying the winter wonderland. Whatever you're doing, I hope that you are having fun. And until next time, stay cozy, stay connected, and I'll see you next week. Bye.